I don't really feel too afraid about things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I know for myself, if I have these ideas or um, things I want to go do or trips I want to do, like, it's on me to do them. Like, and Mm -hmm. if I scare myself or create some scary idea, then yeah, it'll be like scary. Have you ever heard the phrase becoming the best version of yourself? Yeah, me too. But what does that even mean? And how do we become that person? I'm here to help you navigate through those questions and come up with actionable steps in order for you to live your best life. We've got to discover what we want. We've got to figure out a plan on how to get there, and then we have to go. We can't just sit and wait any longer. Life won't wait on us. So come join me on this constant journey to become the best version of yourself and to find your best you. I'll see you on the other side. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Best You. I got the one and only Melissa Wesley with me here today. I'm so excited to have her. I met Melissa a couple times, and just kind of right off the bat, when I met you, I picked out your vibrant personality, (laughs) and I was like, I need to talk to her and get to know her a little bit more. She'd be a great person for me to be around um, and inspire me to do things that I want to do. So that's why you're here today. I'm super excited about it. Uh, I want, how I want to start is how did you get into the fitness industry in general? I feel like a lot of people maybe have some interesting stories. So how did you get into it? Yeah. So actually, when I was in college, I I mean, my whole life I've liked fitness, but mm-hmm. I was an aerobics instructor in college okay. back in the day when like step aerobics was super fun nice. and cool. Um, And just continued being interested in fitness. October will be five years that I'll live in Nashville now. So just moving here and wanting to like meet more people. I looked at a bunch of different yoga studios just to like work the front desk to meet people. So Hot Yoga Plus like asked me to work their front desk. And then I worked there for about three and a half years. And then took a break from that just to like enjoy my Sundays more and have me time. And then ironically started working the front desk at Barry's boot camp this spring and now I manage it. Nice. So yeah. So what why did they pick you to manage? What about your qualities? We don't have to get <laughs> yeah. into like the conversations of what went into yeah. it, but what about your qualities do you think made you the one qualified to be able to do it. Yeah, for sure. Because obviously, like, I'm not a personal trainer. Maybe Mm -hmm. someday I would do group fitness. But I, you know, I've always loved people. I love motivating people. I feel like I connect to, like, everyone on some level Mm -hmm. and that I realize that people just really want connection. So if I'm able to do that with, like, everyone who walks in and make them feel comfortable and, like, try this workout that will empower them that I would be a good fit for that. So you, <laughs> so you think you're more like enthusiastic? You, yes. You kind of yes. bring the joy to everybody? Who yeah. Comes in? And like literally tell people to be like their exact selves. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter what anyone's doing next to you. Like just showing up and going in is like the best thing you can do for yourself. Gotcha. So like no pressure, don't scare people and just like really, you know, welcome them with open arms. Yeah. So why do you stick around in fitness. I think a lot of people maybe go in and like, oh, maybe this isn't what I wanted to do. How do, What is it about fitness that keeps you excited and motivated to do it every day? Yeah, so I think living a healthy lifestyle is super important. Obviously, that's why I love to keep doing yeah. it. But I mean, I the quality of life is so much better when you're mentally and physically and spiritually just healthy. And I'm motivated to help people like be the best versions of mm-hmm. themselves. So sticking in the fitness community and really just having conversations with people and empowering them to continue to do that inspires me to keep being like the best version of myself. Mm. Yeah. So being around it just kind of aligns with your beliefs and exactly. you feel that it brings you up. Basically. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. And in turn, like I'm doing it for them, you yeah. know, but there's, it's, has a return on yeah yeah there too. you go what goes around comes around <laughs> yeah. right yeah gotcha so what i want to go into now is you're starting this new venture with unplugged in nashville and i want you to kind of just you know simply go into what was the motivation behind starting it and everything like that yeah so almost it'll be like last fall winter time i was having this idea while i was still like finishing up working at aviva which is lululemon's sister boutique okay. that used to be here And they make you, like, have specific goals and, like, specific dates and times. So launching, like, an unplugged, like, hiking club was one of them. 
And last year, like, I had a very busy, very, very busy life, and, like, a lot of changes happened, and I was like, this is ultimately, like, the perfect time to do this. Um, When you're faced with something super hard in your life, and, like, you obviously get through that, there's, like, this space, and you're like, yeah, this is why all this happened. So um, the idea of Unplugged, like, in Nashville is to bring people together, like, in nature or to have conversations like this and just unplug from our phones, our watches, all that, computers, all that good stuff, and really just connect because at the end of the day, like, we're all on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're emailing, we're texting. It's because, like, we want connection. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to like people's stuff because we want to connect with them, but ultimately, like, face-to-face is where, like, the magic happens happens and where people can really feel connected so I reached out to like a couple of photographers this winter and then in January um one of them Sam Carbine was available to meet for coffee the other two were kind of traveling internationally I met him he believed in the idea and was like all for helping me do the photo nice. shoot like website and I was like exactly it's an amazing idea right <laughs> so then this spring was working on it um I even, like, talking about facing hard times, uh, my grandma randomly passed away, like, Mm. this spring in March, and, like, we had to reschedule, like, the outdoor photo shoot, like, four times, the indoor one three times, and then it rained for the first unplugged hike. Oh, my gosh. So, like, there's always, and it's just ruined, there's always going to be these things that you have to, like, get through, and, like, things will happen when they're happening as long as, like, you're doing your best to, like, work towards getting it going. Yeah. So, yeah, the first hike was in May. It was awesome. It's like a two-mile hike. So when you would say the first hike, that's where you brought everybody, you brought a group of people together. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. and How many people did you have? There was 20 people there. Oh, wow. And literally, like, I did not know all of them at all. So they just showed up at this location. No way. Um, Everyone left their phones in their car. Sam was there to take photos so people could still, like, have photos of the moments. And there was even two girls there that were like, we just moved here two weeks ago and we thought it would be a great way to meet people. And I was like, how did this even happen? So, and I, you know, just expressed to all of them, like, you know, when we have these ideas, we have these things on our hearts, like because of the people who we are, like you need to just embrace that. And like, you just have to believe in yourself Mm -hmm. and like that they all believed in this idea and that's why they were there. So we did the hike. We did some yoga and stretching, like basic, and we did a self-reflection activity, which I lead that part, and just kind of like finish up. So, nice. so you said you had these goals to do it, but why do you think that, had you had a, like an unplugged practice that you did that you would do in the past? Like, did you go hiking a lot? Or yeah. what was like the initial motivation for setting the goal? Definitely. So I've always loved the outdoors. Okay. And it even goes back to when I was a kid, like as a family, we'd go camping a lot. Like we'd be rollerblading in all these state right. parks, like just hanging out outside, like back in the day when there wasn't as much electronics. So I loved it, and even as I've even been in Nashville, like one of my motivators to move here was the outdoors and health scene, is I see how like happy people get when they're outside. Like when they're away from all that stuff and they're living in the present and it's just like a magical experience. So just like really wanting to share what I see and like seeing that happen with other people. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is, what do you think the most important part of getting unplugged and kind of getting away from life, if you will, and kind of just being open to everything. What do you think that really generates for people? It generates definitely like clarity of where they're at, like presently that day in their life. And I feel like where they want to go. So for instance, it was very funny, even at the last one, I was like, we were reflecting on the first half of 2018, right? Because it was like, Half the summer is over. It was a Hawaiian themed. We had flower lays, all so much fun. I worked like six days that week, so many hours. And I was like, so the first part of this, we're going to reflect on the first half of 2017. Like it was like, and like only one person noticed. And I was like, exactly. That's exactly why we're here. I don't think I noticed it when you said that. (laughs) Just to like turn our minds off. Like, and I was like, oh my gosh. She said 2017 people. Yeah, not 2018. (laughs) So it was just like, again, like, and really, it brings this space where people really can think about exactly where they're at. Like, 
people talked about goals they wanted to do for themselves for the rest of the year, goals that they wanted to do for the community, mm -hmm. and really just allow that space for like them to have some clarity mm -hmm. for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I, one thing I do. You see on the whiteboard <laughs> right there. I write down the date every day. I so know. I present right? in today's moment. Like, it was funny. Like, literally, <laughs> one person noticed. Oh, my gosh. That is so funny. I know. Um, so I think a lot of people that I hope will listen to things like this are entrepreneurs and people who are motivated to do what they want to do. What do you think? Was there, like, one point in time where they, you know, you said that they made you set goals and have a timeline for them for exactly what you want to do. And was there one moment where I was like, okay, I just need to do this that like push you over the edge or how did that kind of look like? Yeah. So, um, in, let's see, it was the fall last year. Like I went through just a major life change. Um, just like personally with a relationship, I'll just be completely mm -hmm. honest. And um, I always like, I'm a firm believer. Everything happens for a reason. Like whether it's, you know, with relationships, career change, um, family stuff, like health, like all these things happen because it definitely creates some like funkiness in our life that yeah. we have to figure out like, how are we going to deal with this? Yeah. Right. And then usually there's this space because so, you're like, oh, so um, kind of had a major life change. And I was just like, honestly, I think this is like why this happened, because it was like life is like, look, you have all these skills and all this motivation and enthusiasm and like, we're ready for you to do this. Like, it's just time for you to step yeah. it up. So I was like, I'm doing it. And I could start to see people like wanting to unplug too. Yeah. Um, even on the internet, I'm like, people are using the word more and I'm like, this is my idea. Like if I don't like start and launch this, like someone else is going to yeah. do it. So I was just like, I got to do it. I got to hustle. That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Most people don't take that leap of faith. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a relationship broken yeah. up to do it. Um, yes. So 100%. twice, twice now you use the phrase that space when yes. talking about, an uncomfortable time leaves this space for you, for you to do something. I want you to tell yes. me a little bit about that space that you're talking about. Yeah, so I feel like a lot of times when things happen in our lives, we're like, there's either kind of two types of people. They kind of keep going on and on, like, why did this happen to me? Or why is this going on? And they're just like, keep going over and over, insanity thinking mm -hmm. about it. Or like, this whatever has happened, and now it's like whether it's like hurtness or, you know, let down or whatever. And there's this like space now. And like, it's obviously not positive and flowing like everything right. else. So it's like, okay, you can like turn all this into a completely different situation. Mm -hmm. So using like problems and using hard times and all those things into a positive way and being like, this space is here because guess what? It's time for you to step it up again. Like whatever idea, whatever feeling you got going on like here it is gotcha so cool. yeah one thing it's it's funny i realized <laughs> it very early on a theme that has come up in the last number of uh, guests that i've brought in is something that i read about and it's talking about kind of discovering your passion and trying to figure out what you want to do and it talks about these two different mindsets that people have there's a fixed mindset where when people if someone has a fixed mindset and mm -hmm. they perceive difficulty um, and their maybe passion that they are what they they want to pursue, then they're like this perceived difficulty maybe means that that's actually not my passion, so I'm going to go somewhere else. And what you yeah. said, what you talked about early on, talks about goes to the growth mindset. So the growth mindset, if those people perceive difficulty in their passion, then it's like okay, that's good. It's supposed to be hard. I'm going to find a way to work around that difficulty. And you, I think you talked about really early on how, you know. It happened, or you had this passion, and then your grandma passed away yeah. in March, and things got tough, and things got busy, and but then you still kind of like fought all all the way through all that, and got made it through the not yes. not, not not that we're all neither of us are like huge, you're but right. you know we're, but we're on the other we're, side, and yes. and you're still making it happen, yeah. and you uh, fought through the difficultiness, the For difficulty sure. of that. So. It's awesome that you had that growth mindset. That I was yeah, I mean, definitely, because anyone and, you know, I would remind myself could be just like, oh, I'm done, like yeah. whatever, which has never been me. Like I've always been this go getter and have all these like creative ideas. Yeah. And again, I was just like, well, this is part of my journey. This is part of my story. And someday when someone else like has a situation, it's like, look, X, Y, Z and the whole alphabet can happen yeah. and like things can go terribly wrong but like your idea is still there your goal is still there and like you're still going after it and like 
it'll happen. Yeah. So. Cool. You said that you have a lot of crazy <laughs> ideas, maybe. How do you know which ideas to go after? How do you know when great, it's the right one? That's a great question. Really, I... Um, I I usually just follow all of them, okay. to be honest. I mean, there's... I feel way, like you probably haven't followed all of them all this of them. Yeah, this is true. So, I mean, you have to also see, like, what you're not already doing in other areas of your life. Obviously, okay. like, some things that I'm super passionate about, I'm able to do in my full-time career. Like, mm-hmm. every day it varies yeah. um, as a manager and be around those people. So, obviously, some of those things that I'm doing, I, like, wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to do that with Unplugged. Like, mm-hmm. Or anything else. And I also think that every idea you have, it might not be like the exact time for it. So it's like, could be this grander idea of Unplugged in a couple years. So it's like, I'm still going after it. Yeah. It's just like not the exact present okay. thing. Okay, gotcha, cool. It's uh, good to talk to people about your ideas too. Um, I really didn't talk to anyone about Unplugged. Yeah. It was just like, I see this and just like really rolled with it. Yeah, well, that's good. But I think, I think talking. it probably, talking is good <laughs> because I think if you can't put it into words, then it really isn't anything. Yeah, like if for you sure. You hear the phrase, if you can't explain it to a kindergartner, then you don't know it. Yeah. So I think that sure. I think that is probably a little bit true too. Um, one of the things that you uh, I think say a lot in your posts and probably you know <laughs> live your best life. That's yes. what you want to tell people a lot. What does living your best life mean? Yeah. So literally showing up like every morning when you wake up to your job, to your meetings, to anything you have and like being a hundred percent present, like giving your best self, like using all your skills at your job, using all those ideas you have, like being engaged in everything you're doing and like being like, I stepped up today and I was the best version of myself Mm -hmm. in that career world. Or if you have goals for your personal life and you want to journal and make sure you do that, or if you're at a workout and like, just know that if you're giving like your life, 100, 110% effort, like whatever that standard is for you every day, like then you're living your best life. Right. Like to everyone, it could be different, but if you're like, oh, tomorrow's going to be the day, like clearly like that day wasn't that day. And also just like starting on something when you're not ready. Yeah. Like people think, oh my gosh, I've been out of working out now for two weeks. I've been eating bad or whatever. And now I don't want to go because yeah. I feel this way or I'm tired. Like you just have to go. Yeah. Like you got to just like start. So, and also, you know, reaching out to people if you ever feel like you need inspiration, like, and just being honest, like being honest with yourself and mm-hmm. other people. I like I like that you were saying just be 100% you because I found at one point in my life that I read a quote that kind of changed the mindset towards that. Yeah. And it was, don't do more to be more, but be more and let the do come from that. Totally. And that was because I... And how I applied it to my life at the time is I just felt like in a rush all the time, going from point A to point B, just like going, 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 (laughs) and realizing that I wasn't 100% myself in all those situations. And I was like, hang on, I need to take a step back and be like, what do I actually like need to commit to so I can 100% show up as myself and give 100% of my time and energy because I wasn't able to do that at one particular time and now I can for the most part I feel like yeah um, so I feel like that was, a, that was a great point that you brought up yeah and it's definitely I think uh you know it's always a challenge especially when you have like entrepreneur projects going on and like I have a cr- crazy like creative mindset yeah. so it's like learning to turn that off too but um also knowing that like for instance an example about unplugged is i've been um doing a lot of things with like the changes of barry's boot camp and all these amazing things going on and my energy is like 120 percent there yeah. loving it having so much fun and i was traveling in july and just hadn't had an opportunity to maybe put as much energy into unplugged mm-hmm. and when I was at the Nashville Fitness Expo recently, um, I one of my friends had a friend in town. Um, her name's Lauren Schwab, and she's in LA mm-hmm. and started Unplugged Mornings, like around May, same time as me. So her talking about just getting people together to unplug, to either hike or do a high intensity workout and get coffee, just kind of that same thing. And I was like, exactly, love it. Yeah. Um, and her thing is doing events right now. Mm-hmm. So we met for coffee before she left and now we're planning an unplugged event in Dallas oh, which nice. is like 
so amazing yeah. and so crazy. And like, again, like I just believe when you're doing other things like in your life that align with everything, like you're generally like working towards stuff that you may not realize yeah. even like, and you're kind of, you kind of create your own luck. Yes. And it's like, place. you know, I was volunteering there. I wasn't, you know, in giving back and all this good stuff. And mm-hmm. it's just like knowing that all these other things in my life are like in line and I'm vibing that like the unplugged vibe comes just mm-hmm. as much as these like amazing berries vibes of like opportunities yeah. too. So definitely cool. I feel like what you said there was really good talking about how when you're doing something 100% aligned with what you want to do, then things happen because I was, I was listening to something about creating your own luck. And I think that it kind of goes hand in hand with what you were just saying. If you're 100% diving in to something you want to do and putting the effort towards getting around people that will help you along the way, then when you get introduced to people, like in your in your mm-hmm. case and in my case too, I've been introduced to some great people. Let's not necessarily just random luck, right? Yeah, You're putting effort sure. towards doing what you want to do and therefore the universe or however you want yes. to thank God, whoever you believe in will help work towards in your favor. Definitely. Um, and it's been so incredibly like magical to see that. Even another random example. And yeah. I joke around about living my unicorn life, but sometimes <laughs> it does feel magical. Nice. Um, in May, again, like these Nashville Fitness Expos, there are so many incredible people there. If you're open to like talking with them and just being open to life, like me and Danny D Fitness had yeah. followed each other for a long time and, you know, Instagram this and I introduced myself to her and she's like, Oh my gosh, I'm plugged. I'm Melissa. Um, and You're she, celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> she told me about her event, which is a Saturday, like Find Your Fit. And then there's another one the weekend following in Murfreesboro, which is a St. Jude charity event. And there's all types of different fitness at it. And I was like, yeah, I would love to lead like a meditation at it and volunteer my time. Like, boom. And that was from the May one. And now this Saturday, I'm leading an unplugged meditation yeah. for all these people. Gotcha. So again, like, I'm just trying to share my ideas too there and passions go. with people. And I'm literally doing it volunteering. Yeah. So gotcha. What do you think you have learned most from uh, and maybe a particular unplugged situation? Yeah. Or just what do you think you've learned most from just that idea in general of being unplugged? Yeah, I really feel like it gives it gives our bodies like a break mm-hmm. to like to recharge. Like we joke that like our phones need recharge, so yeah. so do we. Okay. But really when there's nothing else around, like and you're not just sleeping, like your body gets to just like rest, right? And like get calm. Like not too fast, not too slow, and just then that space provides like the space of like the clarity and you know really taking a step back and thinking about your life again so i think that's kind of the goal is to really just have that space besides when all these other situations happen because Mm -hmm. there's so much that's going on constantly you know a gazillion miles an hour on our phones on our watches in life and really taking a step back and also like it provides a space of gratitude like for everything, which is huge gotcha. as well. I don't think I've told you, but my I have a brother who's hiking the Appalachian Trail right now. Oh my god! And he's Love towards it. the later half of it. And anytime <gasps> I talk to him, he always just talks about how time isn't a thing. He never forgets what day. He doesn't know what day it is, and he's like completely fine with that. He's like, it's just crazy that I wake up and I walk, and there's just no sense of time. Yeah, and that's what that provides him. That's so far it seems to me has been his number one takeaway. Yeah. From the whole experience, just being able to be in that place of clarity at all point in time. Yeah, which is incredible. Yeah, That's definitely. amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, he was absolutely loving it. Um, let's see. So awesome. What do you think is the scariest thing you've ever done or the biggest risk that you've ever taken? I would say it was unplugged. Okay. Yeah, I have gone skydiving before, which... Nice. <laughs> but I mean... No, we're, we're not, we're not we're necessarily not, talking about that. It's not that. that. It's about, like, definitely... Right. all. Um, definitely with unplugged. Like, you know, I was like, I see this great idea and all of this stuff. What scared you about it? Um, I... I guess the only scary part was, like, I was like, will people really show up? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was really it but I was like if one person shows up and it impacts one person then it's a success so I think that I guess a little bit but as far as you know 
I try to, like, being scared of things isn't, like, kind of in my it's nature. Not your, it's not your DNA. So, I'm like, I really wasn't afraid of doing yeah. it. Um, I would say more um, just... Yeah, I mean, like, it, knowing to, like, listen to your intuition and, like, your gut feeling about stuff is I don't really feel too afraid about things. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, I know for myself if I have these ideas or um, things I want to go do or trips I want to do, like, it's on me to do them. Like, and mm-hmm. if I scare myself or create some scary idea, then, yeah, it'll be, like, scary. Gotcha. But, no, you know, I, I like, you. I mean, if you're always afraid of things, then you're always going to be afraid. Yeah. So you just have to, like, dive into it. Boom. Love and, it. yeah, and, I mean, if it's not a success, you tried it. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that's the thing. I think people, like you were saying earlier about, like, if you try this and – you never have any personal training clients and you work at a gym for three months. Well, guess what? Maybe it was summertime. Like, and they quit doing that when the fall came, college students are back and they could have gotten so many clients. Like you just have to like do it and believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of where the like unscared vibe is. I got you. Got cool, cool, cool. Well, you said you uh, you lead meditations, right? Yeah. You probably meditate a lot when you're (laughs) unplugged or whatever. Yes. So I think a lot of people probably who don't meditate, maybe one of the reasons holding them back is maybe because they don't really know how. And it's kind of, when you don't know how to do something, it can be scary. Maybe you don't think, oh, meditation's scary, but it's like, I'm not doing it because I don't really know how to get anything out of it. Yes. So when you lead meditations, how what does that sound like, look like, and what do you try to get out of it? Yeah, so basically, it's kind of like progressive relaxation, like if I'm actually leading it with people. So laying on a yoga mat and just like, telling them and offering the space of like let your arms relax let your legs relax and all that just to like get their body just to feel like comfortable on the mat and then um typically there'll be like a theme to it so maybe it's something about like the future maybe it's something about the present um and I just kind of go from there to where though you're also providing like words to where people can focus on that and not their own thoughts but also not like too much because yeah. you want them to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So when doing that too, you know, I'll take breaks after I may say some things to allow them to just to have that like natural response with their body, yeah. with their minds, um, to create that space for some thoughts. When I'm doing it at home alone um, or maybe in nature, it's really just like for me, it's turning off my phone, turning off my Apple Watch, like, if a theme has came up to me recently in my life or that day or maybe I read a quote, I just try to like be still um, and think about that quote and also just like hear the trees and like where I'm at and just to really like unplug, I guess. So And go back to like the simplest senses of like, what does it smell like? What do things feel like? And just like chill out and just be like, okay, I'm sitting in a park. That's really all that's happening yeah. at this exact moment. There's not like 155 other things going on in my so head. So how, how do you let those ideas not creep in? Yeah. So I just have to like, I literally like tell myself. Do you think it's probably a practice? It's probably taking a while for that to come. Yeah. And I mean, still, I'm no like yeah. champion. <laughs> but, you mean you're not like a professional yeah, no. meditator? But I, and actually, so I wrote an article about forest bathing that's <laughs> in the May, June edition. I, I think I might've read that. Yeah. Um, of the Nash, yeah, the Nash Fit magazine. And basically that's kind of like meditating. So you go into the forest, you walk slow, right? So you're like looking around at everything. You're not like going five miles to go as fast as you can to get your heart rate up. You're literally being like right foot, left foot. And just like going back to the simple fact of like how your body is like moving and like, oh, my eyes see this. And just really using your senses and like, trying to let any other thoughts like go away hmm. and just being like this is where i'm at like this is the present gotcha. it really is i think what some of that pops in my head when you were talking about the simple <laughs> things of like right foot left foot one thing that I, I heard in a monk interview an interview of a monk is that the very first thing you learn in monk training is how to breathe yeah because and and then he explained why it was so simple he's like if Breathing is this one thing in life that you basically have to do. Yeah. Right? You can't live without breathing, <laughs> but nobody's ever been taught how to breathe. Yeah. So, like, why aren't we taught how to breathe? It's like, I was, but it just hit me. I was like, wow, that's like super simple. Yeah. Like but, the simplest things. Mm-hmm, that's crazy. Yeah. One, one of the 
questions that I like to ask everybody towards the end is, uh, how old are you now? I'm 33. 33, okay. You you can honestly look like you're like 20. I know, I I don't know if that's like good or bad. No, it is, I feel like it's, and it's funny, this happens all the time, and I'm like, I feel like I'm in my early 20s, Yeah. even though I'm 33, which I guess fitness and genetics and all that good stuff is, and like having that childlike spirit, but sometimes when you want people to take you seriously, you're like, but really, I'm 33. Like, I'm just not... Was the, is there... A, this isn't the question that yeah. I asked, but is, is there an age where it kind of... the Where was the tipping point of, like, wanting to look old and wanting to, like, still look young? I, like, still... I don't even... You just don't see, care. I don't even care. That's good. And it's so interesting. Like, I don't even think about those things. Yeah. Like, and about, like, where my... As far as, like, relationships or marriage right. or kids or this or that and all that. Like, you just have to, like own your life and like whatever is going on with it and love that like I've never been one to like compare my life to someone else and be like oh they're doing this this and this because it's like I would want to do that you know and everything that continues to happen to you is because like that's your journey like if I'm gonna be some forest bathing spiritual guru that's me (laughs) I mean you know and like own it I love it and I love looking 22 or 20 (laughs) You know, I love That's emojis. Awesome. Like, you know. <laughs> That's hysterical. Had to get there. Uh, very good. I loved making, like, scrapbooks when I was little. Nice. And still did it in, like, college with, like, stickers and markers. So you, like, created the emoji before the emoji Basically, came. I <laughs> did. And, like, I feel so even, like, I feel in tune when I use them. That's so. awesome. Very good. Had to get Well, so the question I was going to ask is, so you're 33 now. Yes. In 10 years, you're going to be 43. Which is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, have, you have goals. You've got aspirations for things you want um you know with unplugged and other things yeah what, uh what does 10 year or 10 years down the road 43 year old melissa wesley look like what have you done what have you accomplished all yeah. that kind of stuff so i see it as i will have traveled to like different states okay. to do unplugged events like at all of them and really trying to get that vibe going in other cities and not necessarily like they buying this idea from me or any of that, but just really seeing like how other people take it and if there's a need for it there. Um, I also see me still being with Barry's Boot Camp. Nice. I absolutely love it. Um, whether that would be like managing or we have... CEO. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Joey Gonzalez is really good though. Um, so I don't think I could be as good as him. But um, we have like client experience teams and just like marketing and um, all these other things that are inside of that. And I absolutely like love the company. And so I could see myself doing something else besides managing. Um, and also like offering that opportunity to train like current managers, you know, and help them with their right. successes of their studios and, um, just unplugged really like even having a creative, like step-by-step process of like how to unplug, yeah. like not just in nature, but just like in other areas of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like offering a space for people to connect, even though it is unplugged, like on like right. Facebook or or um, with a blog thing or guest post people because I think also too like some of our best things that we learn from are people mm-hmm. like and their experiences. Yeah. So which is why I'm doing this. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So just like you know, moving stuff further and really just being at a lot more events yeah. and just. You know, I'll have shirts made by then, there stickers, like swag, all that good stuff. Awesome. Well, I, I really liked one thing that you said that you wanted to provide people was like the step-by-step of how to unplug because I think that one thing that I relate that to is my dislike for cliches. I really dislike cliches because I think that they are way too commonplace and you hear them all the time and it's like, yeah, you hear that and just kind of goes by your head and you don't do anything with it and a lot of people need that how to step by step, like the the cliche of become the best version of yourself. It's like, how do you actually do that? Yeah. Which is what I try to provide people through doing this. So, mm-hmm. and you know, how to unplug and then right. being able to provide that for people is huge. And that's kind of why I wanted to bring up the meditation thing. I was like, how do you actually meditate? Because that could bring so many other people so much happiness yes. and that clarity experience. And so being able to bring the actual knowledge and action steps of being able to do it is which is huge and I think right. that's cool that you 
brought that up. Yeah, and I'm working towards that. So stay tuned gotcha. for the website. Very good. Yeah, awesome. because I know just as much as as you know things in our own lives that come natural to us or like completely foreign to yeah. other people, mm-hmm. just as some of their skills are to us. Definitely. So. That's yeah. one of the hardest things I have. <laughs> like um, like yes. I said, explain it to explain something like it's, you're explaining it to a kindergartner. Yes. Um, but for before sure. I la- ask the last question, I want to do a couple things. I want to acknowledge you first oh my for gosh. Um, being showing up as 100% yourself. <laughs> yeah. Because I really think that, especially nowadays, that so mm. many people can't show up 100% as their self because either they're distracted or maybe they're not comfortable enough with themselves because they compare themselves to other people. But like you said, you're, I don't care if I'm 33 <laughs> or 20 or whatever. Or whatever like yeah. I'm so comfortable with how I am and I'm going to show up as me no matter what anybody else thinks. And I think that's super cool and, and unique nowadays. So that's awesome. Thank um, you. But before I do ask the last question, Tell everybody where they can find you, follow you on social media, online, all that kind of good stuff. For sure. So my Instagram is, my personal one is Melissa Beth Wesley. And then my unplugged Instagram is unplugged in Nashville. So um, we're still working on the Facebook page launch, which is coming soon within the next month. And also the website. So it is coming, but as far as like the next Unplugged events, like the Instagram, Unplugged in Nashville, we'll have that information. And then also Facebook events are created with Unplugged in Nashville. It's just under like me creating them as my personal self, which is also Melissa Beth Wesley on Facebook. Perfect. So yeah, if you Very search good. like Unplugged, you'll probably even see like our past event information. So it is out there. Gotcha. Get on there, everybody. Come on. Yes. Um, all yes. right. So the last question that I ask everybody is always the same. So I've kind of to- told you my purpose that I want to help people become the best version of themselves. And I hate the cliche, but I just really want people to be the happiest and healthiest version yeah. of themselves. And I want to help provide them the inspiration and the actual tools to actually make that happen. Yeah. And so my next question and the last question for you is for you personally, if you could choose to do or to work on three things to help become closer to that best version of yourself, that best Melissa Wesley there could possibly be. (laughs) What are those three things that you could do or that you could work on? So I would say one, the first one would be consistency with like schedule stuff Mm -hmm. um, and like workouts or yoga. So I feel like I've gotten better about like the balance of today I'll do this or tomorrow I'll do this. And so sometimes I think I'm a little too hippity dippity of like, (laughs) well, let things flow and like tomorrow I'll go to yoga and today I'm going to take berries. So I think having like those days kind of mapped out but still like again leeway because there's no right way and like committing to it (laughs) would be a good idea (laughs) because I think that would be like a space to know okay that's gonna happen and that would take away time from my thoughts for like other things I could be thinking about with berries or unplugged um another thing would be to Either go with like help with a meal plan place or okay. cook more because that takes time too. And even though I love to cook, sometimes it does take time. Yeah. I mean, I'm not making any excuses. I'm just being real. Right. But like if that was one less thing as well, like and then creating space one day a week to like cook or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and the third thing would be to have more fun. Like okay. I have fun all the time. Like having fun right. <laughs> I just need more. Uh, no, I'm having fun right now. I have fun at work and do everything, but like having fun doing something that isn't necessarily like work. Yeah. Um like I'm terrible at karaoke, but like I think going and seeing karaoke would be so much fun. Yeah. Or like I want to go zip lining. I've been before and which I'm getting to that space. But, like, maybe it's more like a special fun event, gotcha. like, once a month to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Because um, I launched Unplugged right at the same time when, like, Barry's studio manager stuff happened. Yeah. So, but it's, like, again, been super cool to be, like, whew, like, I did all that. Yeah. And, again, like, a learning experience of someone else was like had all these opportunities in their face to be like you go girl like yeah. you got this like you might not sleep as much but you got it <laughs> um but yeah i would say you know consistency with like workouts and some schedule stuff mm-hmm. um having more fun and then just like not worrying about meal stuff because really like having that space in my head um and then physically with like time and things to do yeah. would allow like 
I mean, the energy for Unplugged to be flowing more and like more stuff with berries and maybe I'd yeah. hit up an extra yoga you class. You think that you, more things could happen if you yes, are Yes, 100%. Yeah. Well, that's I wouldn't awesome. think about those things. Yeah. So. Well, those are great. Three great things. Uh, that was great. It was great having you. Yeah, that's all we got. for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. <laughs>